Hey there Titans, in this video we'll discuss variables on Titan Web. So variables have a lot of usages whenever you want to hold data that's not presented to the user and run with this uh, data doing Salesforce pushes or logic and we'll see all the different types of variables you can use on Titan Web. Variables are mainly divided by um, two or three ways. So we have the project variables and the page variables. And let's take a look at the project variables and the page variables look exactly the same. We just use them in a different scope and we'll explain that in just a second. To see our variables, project variables, these are project variables. So we head over to tools, custom variables. And here we have um, a few sections for the variables. So we have system, static, numeric, string, custom JS for formula fields. These are specific type of variables. And we'll have the same thing for page variables. The differences are that global variables have a scope for the entire project. So if we have multi-page project, we will see these variables and we will be able to use these variables across all pages in the project. So whenever we want to have a variable, that's accessible through all pages. For instance, let's say we have a record type ID or anything else, or let's say you're creating an account and, and on different pages, you want to insert contacts to that account ID. You want to store that in a global variable. Whenever you have a variable that you want it accessible across the entire project, this is where you will place it. And whenever working with data that's specific to a page, you want to use page variables so, since these page variables will exist only on the scope of that page. So whenever we navigate away from that page, the variables become uh, irrelevant and we cannot access them. And whenever we, we navigate back to the page, the variables will be reset. Okay, so let's take a look where we can define page variables. So in each page right now, I have a single page on this uh, a portal um, and what we see here we have some page load actions and under that we have our variables again like we've seen before we got the system variables static variables and then the formula variables numeric string and custom JS similarly to what we had in the um, global variables so if we'll add a new page real quick and this page will be page 2 we can see that we can set these variables over here as well. So let's say if I add a static variable and I'll apply it and I'll navigate back to my homepage and I'll take a look over here, I'll see these do not exist. Okay, now let's talk about the different types of variables. So whenever we wanna have a variable that we're assigning values to either through a condition or through a URL or anything like that, we want to use a static variable. And this variable will allow you to assign values to, you could have a default value, you could assign variables to it through the URL or from um, a condition or affected elements and set value to it directly. You can assign any value you, you like into a static variable. It could be a string, it could be a number, could be a JSON, anything uh, you wish to assign to it, um, it will accept. Um, let's take a look at the system variables real quick. So system variables allow, allows you to get a bunch of information that Titan provides. So you could see like the language of the browser, the browser itself, what browser the user is running, the, the, the operating system user agent, you could do stuff like today and it's full of good things you can use um, if you need uh, anything from the, the Titan that Titan provides you by default. You can get current IP of the user and a bunch more stuff um, directly from here. Important note, you cannot assign, you cannot set a value to a system value. Once you set a, a value to a system value, whatever you selected, that 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 is what it will hold. You cannot um, under no circumstances ma map any values to a system value. If you want to use a value that you can write to, we fall back to our static uh, variables. 
let's take a look at our formula field. So formula fields, just uh, as uh, th their name, what they're meant to do is to combine a bunch of data together and create a formula for you um, dynamically. So what we could see here is, let's say this is a numeric um, formula. I could do in a numeric formula, provided my variable one contains a number, I can do plus one, I can do uh, variable one times variable two, and that will create a multipl multiplication for me. And another thing I could do, I could spit the value out into a, another variable or to any field um, that I have on my project. In this instance, this is a page variable. So obviously, whenever I'm setting values to something on a page, I always want to work with page variables and rarely use global variables for that application. A string variable, a string formula field, what it will do is concatenate um, a bunch of fields and you can concatenate anything you have on the project and obviously right now we're working on a page variable, we wanna make sure we're working with a page formula that will do the concatenation. So for instance, if I had two fields over here, Say I have two text fields, and I'm just gonna rename this to text one. Do this one text two, and this one will be text one. And what I will have here is go back to my page variables, and I'll say string variable. And I'll say text one and text two and I can spit the value out to anything I like and we'll see that in just a second. Um, let me just get rid of this and I'll apply it. And what we wanna do, always very important whenever we wanna see the variable values, since we cannot see it on the screen, then we wanna enable debug mode and debug mode with preview will allow us to see these variables. So if I'll click the bug right now and I'll see that my uh, power field five, which I did not name. So let's go back and name it real quick. And I'll call this and that's great. And I'll refresh my preview and I'll take a look at the debug and I can see that my concat one and two is empty. But if I'll do this and go back here, you can see that it's already populating a value. And I'll say this and look at the debug. And here is my, my concatenation. And what we can do is, again, spit this data out into anything we have in the project. But let's say I'll do another text field over here and we will go back to our variable, to our string formula, and we will spit this out to text field. And now, this will hold our concatenation. We can do the same thing with the number variable, make calculations. Um, it's very cool and you can use it in many, many ways. One thing that will help us know what type of variable we're working with is whenever we approach a variable, either let's say from a Salesforce uh, get or push, let's say we'll, cre we'll create a new get real quick. And in my conditions, again, this is irrelevant, but you will see that we have for a page variable, we'll have the annotation PV before it, and it will tell us which page it is on. So I can see I have three variables on the home page, page variables, um, actually four. And then we could see page two has, again, this is, I didn't name the variables, but you could see that PV page variable page two has two variables as well. And if I had any global variables, which I will add real quick, we will see the annotation of GV, which stands for global variable. So if I'll add a couple of global variables, and I'll go back anywhere. We could do this from, uh, let's say, a condition here. And I'll say here, let's say I want to affect an element, and I will see my 
global variable is GV and my page variable as PV. And this really helps you, for instance, if you have a page variable and you're at home, it cannot affect the, um, it doesn't show it to us because it sees that we're not on that page. It cannot affect a different page variable from uh, affected elements um, from one page to another because the scope of a page variable is for that page that you are on right now. All right, so now that we're familiar with the different types of variables, um, just a general overview, then we will take a look at some options you can have with variables. So if I'll head back to my global variables and, and um, some of it is also on the page variables as well, we could see that we have the uh, kebab here and we have some options. So we have the map the URL and constant. Constant means is whenever you uh, map um, something to that to that variable. The first time that it's mapped, you will not be able to change that um, value anymore. And that's great for if you're mapping uh, record IDs from Salesforce and you don't want that to be changed under no circumstances, uh, constant is, is your go-to here. Map the URL is uh, kind of cool. So before we, we go there, let me show you how you can map a variable from a URL. So let's say this will be some record ID. Let's say this will be an account ID and obviously you want to encrypt it and we will see how this does and how this is done in our next videos. Um, let's say I'll call this um, Okay, so I've named it param from URL and now if I'll save this and I'll refresh my preview and I'll take a look at the debug and I see that param from URL is empty. And let's say I want to populate this from the URL. Um, so what I will do here, since I'm in preview mode, notice that I have already uh, the query string, the question mark for the query string for the URL and ft no cache and device LG. So I do not need to do a uh, question mark I'll just do an end I'll say param from URL and I'll give it a value and I'll run it and now what I'll see in the in the debug I see that my param from URL has been populated but if I'll refresh this or navigate away from the page and navigate back what will happen to this that we will lose the uh, we will lose the URL query, the URL parameter. So whenever you want your parameter to stick to the URL, what you will do is on your variable configuration is you will take the map to URL and that will tell Titan to make sure to pass it whenever you navigate from one page to another or under, cer under certain circumstances when you refresh the page is to um, populate this variable always to the URL, make it stick. So it will always be there for you to use again and again. Another important thing is whenever you want to write a condition on a, a variable, let's say a variable gets a value, changes the value, and you want to take an action, uh, you want to run a Salesforce push, you want to trigger uh, affected elements, anything you want to do, um, to respond to a change in a custom variable, notice that you have the pane for conditions. And this is super important to know that whenever, if you want anything to happen on a, on a variable change, you wanna put your conditions in the condition pane on the custom variable. So here you could say, for instance, obviously it doesn't make any sense to write a condition on a page variable from here, cause you're in the global scope so we only will write a condition on GV global variables uh, from here. Similarly, you want to do the same if you want to react to a change in a page variable. On the condition tab in the um, page variable um, on that configure action on the page where you're at. So if I want to write a condition on this page, I want to make sure I'm writing condition anything that belongs to this page and not on other variables that belongs to other pages or global variables as well. So very important to keep in mind the scope. 
Uh, one more place you will come across variables is let's say if you have a repeated strip or a column. So let's say I'll head over to the strip settings and I'll say that I want to repeat the strip. You'll see the same pane here for custom variables. And it's very similar to page variables and global variables only that the scope of these variables are for each repeated strip iteration. So let's say if you have a repeating strip that has, uh, you're bringing back 15 records to it, then for each of these records, each of these, uh, each of this iteration of the strip, you'll have different set of variables with different values. And again, if you want to write conditions on these variables, th this is the place to do it. So one more variable tap we didn't touch is, and again, we have this on all variables, page, global, and strip, is the custom JS, where what it will allow you to do is map any values to from the project into a JS and here you can write your JS and manipulate the variable however you like let's say if this will be an array or uh, you wanted to split a string so you could do anything you like with uh, JavaScript and return whatever value you want run any calculations from here and return the value. Just always notice the let a is not, you could type in whatever you want and define whatever variables you want, run any logic you like on a set of, and obviously you can map um, any variables here. And do anything you like with uh, your JS. Again, this is a little more advanced, but just so you know you have this option and then you can either use the variable in your in your mappings or set values from it or to it obviously not to it because it, it's a it's a formula field um, so if you want to use it in, in conditions so on and so forth you can use it directly or if you want to display it you can always spit it out very similarly to what we've done with the string variable and this is how it's done